All right, guys, here we have a, uh, well, you know what? I forgot to check the year on this thing. It's a, hang on, let me check out what year this is. All right, so this is a 2014 EasyGo RXV Gas. This one is a click, and that's all it does. Let's see. So you step on the pedal, no crank, nothing. Oh, looks like, and it's missing an air filter. Hmm. Okay. Well, this thing is getting a full service as well. So we'll be able to figure out what's going on with that. I suspect it's possibly going to be that solenoid. So we have a no crank situation here with the click of the solenoid. So I think we're going to start and diagnose that first and make sure that's the problem. If that's not the problem, then we're going to move on to the starter generator. Okay, so I'm gonna do my best here. I got the camera mounted on one of the top struts. First, I'm gonna put an air filter in that. It's gotta be done anyway, so I might as well do it. Get it over with. All right, let's throw this in here. I don't think we're gonna need to take it off to work on it, but at least this way, if we're running it, it's not sucking in all this dirt. Crap, ooh, this looks like it's had an ignition coil installed on it. it doesn't have the short, this thing looks like it had a lot of work done to it, actually. Yeah. Well, we got a loose battery. Can it... Hmm. We actually have a couple of problems here. I'm going to bring you over here and show you this. The first thing I noticed really right off the bat was this battery terminal is loose. I know that's not going to really contribute a whole lot. Huh? No, so that had no effect on it, but look at this. Broken battery terminal. Wow, okay, so he needs a battery. Some guys will drill that terminal and put one on there, but I'm not about to do that. I mean, this thing is, let's see, what's the date on it? It's a 13. It's time. It's, you know, we're in 2021 now, so I mean, it's really a matter of time when this fails. So it does need a battery. I'll have to let them know that, and then uh, we'll continue diagnosing it. So right now, I'm going to take this off of here, and I'm just going to vice grip it to the battery terminal and see if we could at least diagnose the original complaint. All right, so hopefully we won't lose power today. We got like 50 mile an hour winds whipping outside, so we'll see. Get under there, see if I can carefully. Pop this Christmas tree off without it going flying. I like to throw that stuff in the cup holder so we don't lose it. All right, so we have access to the solenoid. Let's grab my meter here. I bet you this battery was dropped or somebody yanked on it with the pliers really freaking hard. Oh, it's not even that tight anyway. I'm wondering if this guy's gonna say, oh, just drill it, just drill it. No, that ain't happening. Because then if something else happens, I'm gonna be the one you're coming after. No thanks. I don't advise anybody doing this, but I'm gonna do it just for our testing purposes. I wonder, you know, I probably could take all that off of there and put a regular terminal on that temporarily. I don't know, I don't wanna really get farting around with that. Okay, so now that we got our terminal hooked up, we're still getting clicks. I'm gonna to go to our negative and then to our positive. We have 12.23 volts. I'm going to go to the big terminal here. I'm actually going to wedge, see if I can wedge this down in there somehow, like so. Okay, that's in there. Still got 12.23. Okay, 12.23 on the first terminal, which is connected directly to the positive battery terminal. Then we're going to go over to the large terminal. When I click it, let's see what happens. I'm uh, not getting any power. Not getting any power across the solenoid. So what that means is the solenoid is bad. It's clicking and it's activating, but it's not passing current through the switch internally isn't closing. That's, that's basically what that means. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this solenoid out. We're gonna change it, disconnect our negative since it's in the way. I'm gonna actually take off the positive because we are doing a service on, well, it doesn't matter. I, well, I gotta clean this terminal anyway on this cable. We got to get all these little problems sorted out here. So what we need to get in here are tiny, tiny hands. 
So I got these little uh, Torx bits here. These are pretty nice. Let's see what size are we here. I'm going to say we're a T25. What do you think? Oh, we are a T, not 25, 27 or 30, whatever this is. It's probably a 27 and I don't have one. <laughs> oh, that was a mosquito. Yeah, it's a T27. Let me see if I can find one. Put my little extension on here. I'm actually going to... No, I'm not. Oh, that's right. These have nuts on the bottom of them. You know, easy go. You guys really suck at this. Oh, hey, you know what also is really nice? This cart is missing the battery hold down, so let's just take the battery right out. That'll give us plenty of room to fight with things in here. What is this? This is... I haven't done a lot of easy go solenoid retain or replacement, so it's it's gonna be interesting. 10 millimeter. Bam. So if you gotta do a solenoid change out, your best bet is just to remove the battery. It'll give you plenty of access. I'm also gonna take out the voltage regulator because it's kind of in the way. So now we have to take half the cart apart in order to get to the main electrical system here, or the main culprit. I'm gonna take that out of the way too. Let's see if I can get in here now without... Nope, of course not. Nope, yes I can. Never mind. take that back. Okay, so we got our solenoid free. There's our solenoid. We've got to remember those go directly to ground. All right. So before I do anything further, I'm going to go ahead and install our new one. We are just going to... Oh, look at that. They even give you destructions. Oh, and look at all the freaking plastic. Let's waste all this plastic. So here's what I'm saying. When they give you the new sol when you buy the new solenoid, they give you all this wire. So making this is I'm gonna put this on White Rogers unless this is an easy go design. Why do we have wires coming out of the solenoid instead of terminals? Screw studs or flat spade terminals? Why? Why? I don't know why. I cannot answer that question. So we're gonna Plop this baby right there. I'm gonna take my two, where are they? Here we go, one is the voltage regulator. The other one is ground for something else. I'm not quite sure. I don't really care at this point. Oh, I got all these wires flailing me in the face here. I'm gonna put that in. I'm gonna drop the second one in just so it doesn't move. Now, I'm going to start this nut here on this side first. Just start it. Okay. They're kind of like a... Uh-oh. That popped out. Okay, never mind. Thought we lost our bolt here. Put that in. Get that in there. We're going to get this nut started. Oh, actually, I think I'm going to use the wrench for that because it's a little cattywampus to get in here. I hope you guys can at least see what I'm kind of what I'm doing. There's not enough room to get the camera over here, so I can't even do that. I'm going to get my big head in the way now. I think I got it started. Yep, oh, I caught it, that's good. So now I'm gonna tighten it down. These are jam. Oh yeah, they're jam, all right, they're jam nuts. The fender's in the way. Let's see if I can just push the fender out of the way. There we go. Wouldn't have been able to do that to get it in. I'd have to 
fight with it and I didn't feel like it. That one's not bad. Okay, so that's in. Now we'll reinstall the voltage regulator just to get it back in its home here. So it's not flailing us around in the face. I'm gonna use my wrench again, my 10 millimeter. And yeah, I know guys, I might complain a lot about stuff EasyGo does. I complain about the stuff that Club Car and Yamaha do too. It's not, not like I, oh, I, I wanna straighten that out because that's gonna bother my OCD here. Come on. Okay. Make sure it's nice and level somewhat. Okay. Take that off. Okay, so that stuff's all returned to its original position. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start transferring over the components here. This solenoid looks like it's been changed once before. Okay, so we're going back OEM, so I'm going to put service plugs on here. I'll have to cut the ring terminals off of that. I knew something didn't seem right looking at this. Well, take these off. Can you see what I'm doing? I can't even see what I'm doing. Okay, now I'm going to get a half inch. I'll just use my half inch wrench here. See if I can... Ooh. Ooh, that's really, well, it don't matter. It doesn't work, so it's not, no sense in worrying if we break it or not. Okay, so we have one large battery cable terminal taken off, which goes on the constant power side. Okay, move that out of the way. So let's make this our constant power side. Let's make this constant power. Actually, I would much rather put the battery cable on first and then that accessory wire. Yeah, I probably could have broken the wires loose first and then went about transferring these over. You got to be very careful tightening these down too. You don't want to you don't want to strip them out. So just be gentle. Cuz these studs are only brass or bronze, one of the two. And you can feel it as soon as that lock washer squashes, just give it a little uh, uh, like that. Okay, so that's good. You'll feel it if you start going past, so you don't really want to do that. All right, now let's get the starter generator circuit off. Oop. Okay, so on this side we have the voltage regulator, which is the switched side, and the starter generator circuit. This poor cart looks like it's seen better days. I must say. Okay. So we'll take this wire, put it on here. Actually, you know what I think I might do? This seems right to me if I take these and switch them. Like I said, you know, full disclosure, it's been a while since I've done an RXV solenoid changeout, and this is actually the first OEM solenoid that I've had I've changed to. I dropped it on the ground. No, fantastic. So that side will get battery. This side will get starter generator and voltage regulator. 
Oh well, I'll just use the other flat washer from the old one. I dropped it, I don't know where it went. That, come on, get started. I didn't drop the nut, I just dropped the washer. No biggie. And then we'll hook the battery side of this back up. And then we can wire in the Again, don't go too tight because you don't want to screw things up. Okay, so now we'll do that one. This is the battery cable. This is the keep alive circuit. I call it the keep alive circuit. It's basically the circuit that sends power to the key switch. Blah, blah, blah. You know, that kind of thing. I just want to make sure that that's not going to interfere with that too badly. No, we should be good. Turn this in that way. It'll probably turn as I start tightening this up. But yeah, that's the the frustrating thing about these carts. Well, pretty much everything is frustrating about these carts. Um, everything is frustrating about these carts. All right, so now that I got to cut wires here, I'm just gonna. I'm just going to cut these off because I can't use these ring terminals. I didn't realize that was a aftermarket solenoid, actually, until now. Because the factory ones, they give you the butt connectors that you got to use in order to service this. So I'm going to cut this back to here. Throw the excess in the scrap pile. I'm going to cut these off here. I'll throw it in the glove box for the customer. Let me use these little guys here. Which is preferred, in my opinion. Strip that one. Strip that one. Because, you know, the, this is a, a wear component, so, you know, I would expect it to be made serviceable much easier than what it is so negative side we're going to do the male terminal connector or, or flat blade connector to spade connector whatever you you feel like calling it we'll do the female or the male connector on the positive side of the solenoid here Come on. I know I'm probably in the way. I'm sorry. Okay. And now the female connectors we're going to use on the positive of the cart side. And we'll use the positive or the negative female connector on the solenoid negative is that redundant yeah probably it's been a long day this is a very busy week this week getting carts ready for storage return so i haven't really been able to do any video recording all right so red to positive black is negative all right now we don't have a battery so we're going to drop the battery in and test it i'm actually going to put this that on there Okay, slide that in there where it belongs. That too. Looks like this cart has been hacked up quite a bit, if you ask me. Okay, there we go, now that's in. I'm gonna drop the battery back in, just to test, just so we can do a service on it. Now. 
Not gonna hook the light kit up. I don't really care about that at the moment because it doesn't matter. Let's hook up our positive here. This terminal looks like it's ready to break off too. I'm gonna have to give this guy a call and tell him he's gonna, he needs a battery. Okay, there's our positive. Here's our negative. Oh! It sounds a lot more chunky, so I know that it's working. Let's just verify we have power to the starter generator now. Negative and positives here from, yep, that's from the, the solenoid. Yep, we got 12 volts. Okay, so we must have another issue here with the starter, starter generator has got a failure in it. So let's figure out what's going on with that. I'm gonna take a look at the brushes and see what they look like. Usually by looking at one brush, you can tell almost immediately the condition of the, uh, the, the brushes. Oh, whoops, I dropped the rubber thing. They look like they're a little funky. We are also having some bad luck here with our starter generator. Where are my brushes? This is suspension pots. Yeah, that brush is wore out. So it looks like we have uh, multiple issues with this cart. I'm gonna have to get in touch with the customer, let them know that we need to get brushes for the starter generator. He needs a battery. He's got a bad, well, he's got a new solenoid now, so that's okay. So I guess I'll get in touch with the customer. We'll figure out what they wanna do and go from there. All right, so I talked to the customer. They're good to go ahead with all of these changes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the starter generator we're gonna change the battery. You can see I got one right here. It's an Exide, not my normal battery, but that's really, that's all available at the moment that I can get. Uh, so we're gonna pull out the Deca and put the Exide in, and then we'll pull the starter generator and wait for the brushes and rebuild that. So let's get this battery pulled. That way this is done. Uh, then I can actually service this part of the cart. So for these style batteries, because they have different posts. See, this has a through hole post. The Dicas don't. Well, all Group 26 batteries that I get are like this, where they have the top post. I use this style because this style battery is almost twice as much as this. All right, sorry about that, folks. I had to go out and make a phone call. All right, so we're gonna lift this battery out. Now, this cart was already missing the tie down, hold down bracket. So I'm not gonna worry about that. I can't really worry about that because I don't have one to replace it. But you can see this, I don't know if you can see it, but this terminal is already bulging and it's almost like they grabbed it with the pliers and yanked it out. But this one broke off and it's already a 13. So it's time to, a mid 13 actually, it's, it's time for a battery. It's gonna need one eventually anyway. This would probably be its last year. So let's just go ahead and change it. Be proactive about it, if, if you will. The negative terminal, battery terminal, you know, it fits like that, no problem. The positive is too big. The terminal's too big. So don't take your giant mallet and try to smash these clamps on here because, you know, the battery really doesn't like it when you do that. Just does not like it. I've seen people do that and they're, swale, they're wailing on it. It's like, what are you doing? Don't do that. All right, so what I am going to do, because I know that this cart is supposed to have the battery terminals in facing the wall of the cart, I'm going to put them in back in that orientation like they're supposed to be. We're going to tighten down these clamps here, and then we're going to take these 7 16 bolts out. I'd lose my head if it wasn't attached. So what this is going to allow for is 
keeping the cart electrical system on one post here and then put the light kit on the other side, which that's something I like to do. I think that's a, a good way to do it. And this is a brand new battery. You can see maybe March 2021. So when I get batteries, they're not something that's been sitting on the shelf for six months. I get batteries that are usually a month, two months most old. I don't get anything older than that usually. The youngest battery I think I've ever gotten was I think maybe two weeks old. I got it right from the factory. And that's what I like about dealing with the supplier that I have is that I can get batteries pretty much as they come off the assembly line. I don't like dealing with uh, like Walmart or Napa or AutoZone or whatever. I don't buy batteries from them companies. Uh, I don't think I, I don't think I've ever, maybe once I bought a battery one time when I first started this gig. But since then, I don't. I found a battery supplier that I really like to deal with. It's a small mom and pop shop that's been around since, oh, I don't know, the 20s, 30s, something like that. Might even be longer. And you get that personal feel when you go there. And that's what I like. All right, so we got that squared away. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my drill and put the brush on there so we can clean these terminals up. And that will be one more thing done. So let me do an install date on this. My silver paint marker. 5, 4, 21. Do the same thing on this side. I like to write it everywhere. And I use my paint marker so I know that it was me. Okay, now we're ready to drop this bad boy in. Choke cable's in the way, of course. Alright, that battery sits in there nicely. That puts our positive terminal over here. Negative terminal over here. I can tell by looking at the size of the terminal, terminal which one is which, so that's no big deal for me. One terminal here. I'll tighten this down. Actually, let me put the light kit positive wire here first. Okay. Let's kind of straighten this up a little bit. And then the only thing we have to really wait for now is the brushes to come in for the starter generator. Which they should be here hopefully in a couple of days. Everything is just taking so long to come in. I hate it. I'll tighten this down. It's not near the negative. We're good. That's tight. And I like to put the ring terminals in between these clamps. I don't know if you guys can actually see what I'm doing here. The air filter's probably in the way. Okay, that's tight. Now we'll clean the negative. Ooh, I just got stabbed. It's so good to be back in business again. Last year sucked. Business was terrible. I think I had three months of work. Okay, now I'll hook up our negative light kit. I could at least test the lights now and make sure everything's good there. These terminals for the lights are fine, they're clean. You really should wear gloves when you're dealing with these terminals because they are made out of lead. And when you're installing the battery, you should always do the positive side first. So that way if you touch any metal components and the ground cable isn't hooked up, you don't short anything out. Uh, and also when you're taking it out, positive side or negative side first, positive side last. Now what I'll do is I will spray battery terminal protectant on there. This stuff is so stinky, it's like Yeah. There. I like to saturate the hell out of it because that way I know it's good. And normally if it was a metal on metal mounting system. I would spray down the bolts and hardware that holds the bracket in, but since there is no bracket because somebody lost it, we don't have to worry about that, unfortunately. Okay, so for now, this cart is pretty much done as far as I can go. I can't go any further with it other than pulling the starter generator out, and we'll do that when the brushes are here so we don't have to have parts all over the place, and we'll deal with that then. All right, guys, here is that easy go 
Unfortunately, I started to get up against a time crunch and I wasn't able to film anything related to the starter generator repair, unfortunately. Yeah, it sucks because that would have made this video nearly complete. The only thing left that I have to do on this one is change the two front tires because they're basically slicks. I got a couple used tires here we're gonna throw on it for the customer. I do apologize that we didn't get the starter generator in the video. Um, you know, sometimes these things happen with this kind of stuff, but the cart does, it does crank over and it does run. I'm not near the choke at the moment, but let's see if we can get it to fire up. There it goes. So you can hear that it does run. We've already done the full service on the cart. Oil change, filters. Spark plug was still good, actually. It wasn't even blackened. It wasn't even... It doesn't look like it was uh, really used a whole lot since it's been changed. So we didn't change that, but everything else is done on it. The lights all work. All right, so the problem is now just got to do these tires but like i said unfortunately i was not able to film the repair of the starter generator this thing is actually getting ready to ship out right now load it up on the trailer and take it back to the customer that's how fast that i have to get this done and i barely even have enough time to make this close out for this video so i just wanted to thank you guys for watching i really do appreciate it as always if you like the video smash the like button subscribe to my channel if you already haven't be sure to leave a comment down below let me know what you think. I'm interested in your thoughts and views. And until next time, guys, we will see you in the next video.